What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'm going to be running through some of the optimal game settings that you can use in the Battlefield 2042 open beta. When the full game comes out, I'll have a much more advanced breakdown of what each of these settings do for your FPS, etc. And of course, how to optimize Windows on top of that if I don't create a video for the beta now. You'll find links in the description down below if I do make other Battlefield 2042 optimization guides. Anyways, let's get into optimizing the in-game graphics settings for the highest fidelity and FPS, letting you see what's going on while still being able to actually play the game. So before hopping into a game, I'll customize them on the main menu just so that I don't get kicked. Head into the options screen and we'll start on the general tab. Of course, there's not many things that you'll want to change from these other menus other than say display, because a lot of them don't have any sort of effect on actual gameplay other than ones such as camera shake amount, which when this is set to lower numbers, you'll be able to see more when explosions and heavy things are going on. The communication tab isn't very useful right now as voice chat is disabled in the beta and the network tab over here does have something down here called an aim lead indicator. This should be set to on and should show you some kind of an indication of where to aim and I assume it's on the network tab because it helps people with worse internet, higher ping, learn where to aim while not actually having the best connection. I haven't really seen this in effect in game, but it may be useful now or later on. The display tab is where everything interesting happens. So without making this too long, I'll run through some of the basic settings you'll want to change here. Full screen mode should always be set to full screen and the full screen resolution should be set to the same resolution as your monitor. Anything lower may result in a blurry image. Refresh rate, of course, should match your display's refresh rate, otherwise you may get screen tearing and things like that. If you do receive screen tearing, and possibly quite bad screen tearing, you'll need to turn on vertical sync at the very bottom here. Otherwise, if you don't get screen tearing, you should always have this set to off for the best input latency and lag. Heading back up to the top, field of view. The less you see, usually the more FPS you'll get. However, this was set to 9, and I really don't think I have 9 field of view. I'm not too sure if this is a glitch, but regardless, the lower the setting, usually the higher the FPS you'll get. I'm just leaving everything as is here, as I'm pretty happy with the way things are currently. ADS field of view will lower your field of view whenever you scope in. You can turn this on or leave it as the default of off. Now, heading down to the graphic settings, you won't really gain too much FPS here. It's really just customizable things, such as brightness, motion blur, which is really up to you. The lower your motion blur is here, the more you'll be able to see while spinning around and moving in game. Of course, though, this is completely user preference. HDR, as far as I've heard, is disabled for the open beta, but of course, if you have an HDR screen, you may want to try and turn this on. Chromatic aberration, film grain, vignette, and lens distortion should all be set to off the highest visibility. Scrolling down to graphics preset, you'll usually have it on auto, and that should give you roughly 60 FPS for the graphics card that you have. If you prefer using GeForce Experience to optimize your FPS and things like that, you may want to follow along with those guides and adjust it as necessary. Usually, max fidelity, or whatever the default is, is just the high setting. I have a 1080 Ti, and this is what it's picked for me. But not everything here is necessary for actually getting a good experience. The texture quality and texture filtering up here really depend on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you have a newer, better graphics card, having these set too high will give you a better visual experience, but may come at the cost of FPS, as with most of these settings here. Though the same can be said about anything. Setting these all down to low will give you better FPS than setting them all the way up to ultra. That's pretty self-explanatory here. The ones that may make a difference with your FPS would be texture quality, texture filtering, lighting quality, Effects quality somewhat, I would expect only during explosions and other things like that. Post-processing shouldn't really make a huge impact on your FPS. Mesh quality, somewhat of an impact. And terrain quality will definitely make a huge impact as these landscapes are absolutely massive. Same goes for undergrowth quality. What I would usually lower here for more FPS would be texture quality and texture filtering, lighting especially so, as shadows and lighting aren't always too important and usually having this set to higher options in games will give you less visibility as people blend into darker backgrounds a lot better. Having this set to lower usually increases your ability to spot players in dark areas, etc. But for now, I'm happy where it is. Terrain quality and undergrowth quality are other options that you can try and lower if you're receiving lower FPS in-game. Anti-aliasing post-processing I usually have set down to the lowest option, if not off, as this usually makes things a bit blurrier and of course can be quite costly with FPS. Ambient occlusion, HBAO, does come at a higher cost, but SSAO or off 
are much cheaper to run in your graphics card. So let's quickly optimize for the highest FPS possible. I wouldn't really lower these too low. Medium would probably be fine. Effects wouldn't matter too much. Post-processing would be barely noticeable. Mesh quality you can probably lower quite a bit. Terrain quality I'd leave it maybe medium. And undergrowth I'd definitely lower down as far as possible. I'd say that these would give you really good FPS in the game compared to whatever the auto settings were. Scrolling down to the very bottom, we have dynamic resolution scale. Turning this on should give you more consistent FPS all the time, but with lots of things going on, it will dynamically lower your resolution scale, making everything equally blurrier or sharper, depending on how your computer is performing. This isn't really the best thing to have, especially when you're trying to focus in a firefight. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is obviously only for NVIDIA graphics card owners, and you should have this set to enabled, if not enabled, plus boost. This will lower your input latency quite dramatically, though I wouldn't really use the boost option, as I've heard that it pins your graphics card, or at least parts of it, to 100%. Leaving this at enabled is probably the better option, especially if your graphics card is heating up quite a bit. Future frame rendering should also be set to on, but this could cause more input lag. It's really not noticeable for the number of extra frames you get by having this on, so I'd leave it on. Vertical sync we went through already, set to off, and a high fidelity objects amount, you can lower this as well as it may give you a more consistent experience and higher FPS. I'm not entirely too sure what this could be, but lowering this option, as it says, should improve your FPS. So I'll set this to maybe medium. With my settings as is, I'd be pretty happy with this and I'd expect around 90 to 100 FPS in game, maybe. Of course, this is the open beta and the game will change a huge amount before the official release. The HUD tab over here, once again, only really shows the camera shake amount option, which you may want to change if you want more visibility. The sound tab at the very top has a bunch of options. Lowering music usually helps you hear footsteps and the rest better if music is currently playing, but the only thing I would change down here would be the audio mix. If you have high quality stereo headphones, you may want to use 3D headphones instead of other options here, as it'll give you a better perception of locations of sounds in the world around you. But of course, this really depends on what you'd like. There is a specific one for Astro and Pro G apparently, so you may want to choose these if you have those specific headphones. If you don't like explosions being incredibly loud and footsteps being not so loud, you'd probably want to use the night mode up here, which has a more narrow dynamic range, meaning that footsteps are louder and explosions are softer. So if you're someone who sits around and snipes, maybe this would be a better option for you to hear people sneaking up behind you. Everything else here is really up to user preference. And of course, the voice chat tab here hasn't been enabled for the beta. I don't use controller, so I won't be running through the controller options up here, but on the mouse and keyboard tab, you should absolutely make sure that mouse raw input is turned on. This will give you the lowest input latency and of course the best experience. On foot at the top here, there's only a couple of things you'd want to adjust here, other than maybe aim sensitivity and ADS field of view. That's the soldier sprint down here, to whether you're more accustomed with tapping shift once or holding it, I'll usually leave this as hold. And down a bit further, sprint to vault over, which I'd usually have set to off, as you'd want much better, finer control of how you're moving in game, instead of just automatically jumping over walls and things. The same goes for the vehicles tab up here, though it's only really sensitivity that you'd adjust here. The accessibility tab up here just pulls settings from different locations in this menu, allowing you to customize things to better suit your personal needs. It's usually just motion blur, camera shake, maybe vibration, hints, and of course options for those who really need it, such as narration and colorblind mode. The control section at the top here also has the toggle and hold options for sprinting, zooming, etc. But of course that brings this to a close. Let's quickly hop into the game to see what kind of FPS I'm getting with medium to low options compared to just everything set to high on a 1080 Ti at 1440p. Previously, I was averaging around 59 to 60 FPS, so let's see what kind of difference it made. Of course, this will be dramatically different when the full version of the game is released in about a month's time. And there we go, hopping into the game, I can immediately feel that it's a lot less jumpy and I have less input latency. Some of the things that are especially noticeable is the speed of zooming in, where before it sort of froze for a second before it brought up my weapon to the center of my screen. Other than that, my FPS has gone from about 56 to about 70-ish, which is somewhat of an improvement, but also visibility seems to have changed quite a bit with the lowered graphic settings. It's a bit easier to acquire targets. Of course, that is if you can leave a use bond. But of course, your experience really will be different to mine and it's almost impossible to predict how it'll be for you.
Hopefully while you're playing, you don't die over and over again every time you spawn. Another thing that's noticeable is the speed up here of pulling up and lowering this menu that also caused quite a bit of instability. As well as with the foliage here, it's a bit easier to see people if there were to be lying in it compared to before. So overall, a pretty good boost of about 20 FPS to what I was before on all high settings and much better stability, especially while moving around in different menus from location to location and quite a bit of a visibility improvement as well. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobby here for Troubleshoot. And of course, I'll see you again in another video when the full game comes out with a much more in-depth Windows optimization as well that specifically focused on getting the absolute best out of Battlefield 2042. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.